Rick Nolan. Rick, I was gutted you weren't in Atlanta, man. I really wanted to meet you, but hey, hopefully yeah. next time. Yes. Uh, I was one of those this people a, just this is like, a guy that this is a guy that knows how to present deals, by the way. So uh over to you. All right. Uh you can see my screen okay? Yeah. Hey, let me just uh hit the bar here. All right. So this is a consulting for equity deal. Uh, that I've been working on. Um, I'll give you some more backdrop of one of the founders toward the end. Uh, so, so, um, I'll, so what they're putting together is a suite of tools that uh, on a SaaS platform, so a software as a service, so basically like a web app, to allow homeowners to manage their property. So you'll see as they go through helping homeowners find mortgages, helping them find. Uh, renovation loans, for example, helping to find service providers for some work around the house, et cetera. Um, and uh, so I'll make the comparison. It's a startup, right, to be clear. Uh, so basically they're zero revenue today. The company is, uh, you know, in the stages of being formed kind of thing. So it truly is a, a startup in that context. Uh, so uh, I'll go talk more background in the space a little bit toward the end of the presentation. But it comes from a technology company that's already been building tools for the real estate in industry since 2015. And, and uh, the two founders, you can see in the bottom of the slide here, uh, have spent decades in the mm. real estate industry you never overall. Know. Take it. Sorry, does someone need to be muted there? Yeah, I'll deal with that. Um, sorry, okay. keep going. So the two founders come from the real estate, real estate industry and have a lot of regard and not just the real estate industry per se, but but uh, providing technology solutions to the real estate industry overall that they're leveraging in this context as well. So they're starting from a point of, of traction and moving into a, a new opportunity that they've recognized and, and want to pursue. Um, so as I said, it's, it's uh, you know two guys in idea and trying to build the company out. So they're looking for $500,000 investment today and 50 beta customers I'll talk about a little, a little bit uh, later on as they uh, start trying to test the efficacy of the other product they have. But the the forecast is got basically, I'll, I'll treat this as it'll probably be at 2024 before the revenues kick in when they have a, a, uh, a product that they can offer for sale. So these align with calendar years starting in 2024, but you know they expect a hit break even kind of in the 18 month mark and growing as you would expect a SaaS model to do with, with a lot of uh, profitability. Uh, within the uh, five-year period. So as I mentioned, the, the offering itself is, is uh, laying over top of the residential home market. So residential real estate, everyone on, on this call I'm sure knows, is, is one of the uh, largest unmanaged asset classes in the world, right? Uh, where you know most people are homeowners and uh, everything from single homeowners, which is the bulk of the marketplace, to multiple homeowners, um, you know, it's a very, very large marketplace, and there aren't a lot of tools uh, out there to assist a homeowner uh, manage the property the way a commercial property manager would have. So some of the spinoff uh, aspects of that home ownership activity are around uh, home maintenance spending, uh, insurance for the for the home and car, et cetera, uh, mortgage commissions, and, and the maintenance spend. So it's a very, very large, very, very active marketplace that these guys are leaning into. So the market problem that they're trying to address in terms of the opportunity, uh, it really comes down to what's in purple here, which is when you think of other applications, like from a user experience, people want to you know, have a very easy, accessible opportunity for finding you know, the best sales on items. Like how, how many of us start off when we're shopping for something going to Amazon, right? Or when you travel and you go to Expedia, you go to Auto Trader, for example, if you're looking for a car. So you're looking for these kinds of apps to assist you to survey the marketplace on your behalf, find the best offering, find the best price, and give you come back to you with choices as to which ones you want to do. So that's what this, this opportunity is going to provide in the area of, of services for homeowners. And as I say in the point below that, this idea comes from the work that they're already doing with 225 real estate offices in Canada with 6,000 agents within that, 
using an existing SaaS product that they offer in their in the parent company. So in terms of the fit, so there's the market need. What the solution they're putting together is kind of like the electronic health record. And I mentioned that specifically in the context of when you think of an electronic health record, think of security, think of, of, of the uh, ability to share from your doctor of, of this one condition to a doctor over there. So basically you own the record of your home, everything from the maintenance records, you know, when, when the roof was in place last to the water heater uh, warranty, et cetera. You own the health record of your home and you get to choose where you share it, right? So by leveraging in some of the uh, connections on uh, marketplace uh, value activity uh, on, on uh, you know, uh, so there's, there's the neighborhood profiles, there's neighborhood sales activity. There's a whole bunch of things I'll talk to you a little bit later, later on again into some of the partnerships. But adding in this sort of real time uh, information into the SaaS platform adds value to what you need to be done for your home uh, management to make sure you have the latest, you know, in terms of being a real time information, but also by going into a broader marketplace, uh, uh, the the most uh, efficacious as well. So it's not just about price; it's also about you know some of the uh, you don't mind paying a higher price for a better service, for example. It's not without competitors, right? So uh, the the company that I'm talking about here is the first one highlighted in blue here, but there are other ones as well. But what I'm highlighting here are the differences between this offering and some of the competitors that are already in the marketplace. So there is an opportunity to be disruptive in this marketplace overall. So it's a large growing industry already with lots of activity. And these other companies that have come before, really to my way of thinking, just prove out the market, right? So you don't have to wonder if this is gonna take off or not. These other companies already show you that there is a marketplace that is getting activity and can you beat them, right? Back to your unique sales proposition. So why this company will win? I love this simple business model for this company and for it to, to grow and get traction. I'll talk about it in the next slide. But basically for the users using it, it doesn't cost them anything. So you think of Facebook, right? Or, or, or X or formerly known as Twitter, for example. There are marketplace platforms out there that have no cost to use, right? You monetize that on the back end. Right on in different ways of advertising. This has got a little bit different way of monetizing it, but the getting the eyeballs in here is no cost to the user, but with great value to that user in terms of, of the outputs of the of the, uh, of the of the application itself. So real time application uh, analytics I touched on. Um, the more you put into it in terms of pro profiling your home, the more it can help you as well in terms of of uh, getting the best information. Um, and I touched on here on some of the te technology stack underpinning the platform. So I don't expect people on the call, if you know them, fantastic, but Ruby on Rails, React and React Native, all available with web APIs uh, connectors to go into this uh, application. So they're not building everything from scratch. What they're doing is, is uh, uh, linking in things that are already available. So here's the simplicity of the business model that I love. It starts off with tapping into a base of referral sources. And by these, I mean brokers and agents. So these are the gateways to get in the actual homeowners signed up. And so each person is expected to re refer this product to their clients. And so the, the founders existing relationships, they have existing relationships with 6,000 Sutton Realty agents. So Sutton Realty is a large a national real estate agency in Canada. Um, and uh, this company already provides uh, one of its other products to that uh, company. And so there's a, 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 a brand of trust associated between the Sutton Realty Agency and this parent company that they intend to leverage. So it starts off with, with expanding that relationship of trust with the intermediaries, the referral sources. But then each broker, from a model perspective, you're expecting them to deliver 15 to 20 free home prints annual. Home prints is what the output of this is. So if someone comes in and they own a home, think of it like a fingerprint. So, but this is a, a print for your home where you, you it's going to capture the unique uh, identifiers about your home. And so the, that 15 to 20 
uh, home prints from a broker is about 15% of their client base, typically, to give you a sense of, of uh, throughput there. And then the next piece of the business model is you expect a very small percentage of the cumulative number of home print users to request help in some of these various areas, like asking for a mortgage or a refinancing of the existing mortgage. So it doesn't have to be one put in place as you purchase the home. It could be when that comes for, up for renewal. Um, home insurance or small renovation loan. So you're expecting a very small percentage of, of penetration into your base of, of free home prints. The company based on existing relationships are expecting a modest penetration into the Canadian industry and then a year three expanding into the US marketplace. So that's that's kind of its go to market strategy and simplicity of the business model. Here's what that comes to in terms of numbers. Right, so over here in the, uh, if I can get my little cursor going, are the various types of referral networks, the total number that they have in Canada, et cetera. So let me just talk about the business model in turn here as I explain this chart. So some of the key drivers to the business model starts off with the cumulative home prints. So as I mentioned in the previous slide, 13 per year per broker, right? The, the attraction, so of the 140,000 real estate agencies, for example, by year three, the company is expecting 15% penetration at that marketplace, back to where we were just talking about a, a TAM, SAM, and SOM. Uh, mortgage brokers, 3% of that marketplace. They're not counting on any penetration in insurance brokers. Um, and then home bill was 16%. And then the that's of getting the home prints, then the penetration of the home prints themselves. So just 1% of the home prints asked for uh, mortgage assistance, 0.5% uh, for uh, of renovation loans of $25,000 being in the average, and then 2% uh, uh, on the insurance brokers. So very, very simple, small numbers, but you can see when you look at the forecast years one through five, how it grows over time in terms of the, uh, of the activity. And most of it is based on cumulative growth as well. You see the footnote in year three, that's when we, uh, the company intends to expand into the US marketplace. So for those of you who like a visual presentation, I'll have that as well that we can come back to. Um, but basically it's your typical hockey stick growth. I always laugh when, they, when uh, you, know, you think of a venture capitalist, for example, complain when a, a founder talks about their hockey stick growth, but if the hockey stick didn't exist, they wouldn't invest. So this one has a, a healthy, uh, growth opportunity. And what I will say about this is I've spent some time talking to the founders to beat some realism into in terms of the assumptions that uh, underpin uh, their forecast. So I'm quite comfortable with the achievability of this forecast. So the numbers themselves uh, show this way in terms of the revenues going from 430,000 in year one to 27 million in five years. Uh, the marketing expenses, et cetera, sales, product development are modest, uh, but do grow, but just not at the same pace. That's a nature, particularly the SaaS company, but any product company that sales grow faster than expenses. And so the profitability at an EBITDA level, as I said earlier, starts off in a loss position in year one, somewhere around the 18 month mark, it's break even, and then grows to a, a $24 million uh, profitability in year five. So breaking that down in terms of go to market for the first year, uh, they're expecting to release their beta version by October 31st. So we're looking for, or they're looking for some uh, uh, people to participate in that trial. Um, they want to test with a few large uh, agents and teams. So these are people who do hundred plus transactions per year, plus a small number of past and future, or sort of past and current clients that, they, that the two founders have, if you want to bring into it. So the, the whole purpose of the beta test is to test the functionality and to make sure all the bugs are out of the uh, out of the product before they release it on sort of uh, January 1st of 2024. And they're expecting 20 home prints per agent from that uh, beta test in terms of a, a trial. So the goal here, again, is to complete version one of the platform by, uh, by the start of Q1. And then as it moves into the end of year one, start moving on into, uh, you know, hey, we got version one done. Now we want to start adding some of the enhancements of getting into some of the pro tool functionality, expanding some of the develop uh, uh, relationship with home builds, et cetera, that I talked about in the previous slide on penetrations. And, uh, and then uh, starting once we have confidence in the uh, functioning of the tool and the ability to, you know, walk the talk, so to speak, 
So to you know, ban, uh, build out uh, consumer ads. Your three milestones, focus on the uh, technology readiness and moving that into year two. So adding the missing features as I, as I just described um, and uh, focusing on user acquisition is a big part of that back to the, the building model that I, I re, uh, touched on earlier. And in the second year, one of the add-on features, at the end of the day, you all want uh, a company to be a portfolio, not just a single product. So as they look to expanding their, their portfolio offerings, uh, looking into other areas, for example, home inspection. And then I mentioned talking about the uh, building on the Canadian experience and going into the U.S. marketplace. Traction to date, as they've already got some key partnerships in place. Uh, so uh, OPTA Solutions has a uh, it's basically a database of, uh, in the Canadian context, um, uh, residential and, and commercial uh, real estate locations across Canada. And it's it's relied on as as uh, you know the term is ground truth property data. Um, Walnut Insurance offers uh, insurance quotes online, uh, so you know API is the connector between uh, them and your software application. Uh, so that they've already got a partnership place in that, and so it has connections into fourteen carriers that will uh, insurance carriers that will provide the quotes. Neighborlytics is a partnership as well that connects through an API to their software tool uh, that provides the, the neighborhood information, everything from profile in the neighborhood to recent uh, real estate uh, transactions in the neighborhood, et cetera. They already have a five person advisory board in place with expertise in the real estate industry uh, on their industry bodies. So the governing bodies, not just the real estate agencies themselves. So uh, the real estate associations, for example, uh, on uh, real estate property development, uh, back to that uh, home ownership uh, connection um, and industry. And then uh, what they're approaching me on is uh, bringing expertise to financing. Uh, they've already started a home print database building on what they've, they've uh, have been using already, what they've, as they've tested out their alpha, for, alpha product, for example, et cetera, they've already been building up their, their home print database from uh, what they have. And they've been recognized in a few places as well for what they've been putting together. So generally what they're looking for right now is, as I mentioned, $500,000 of investment. And the notion here is uh, to put that as a convertible debenture uh, that will convert into whatever the security is for what, what I'm referring to here as a qualified transaction. So that qualified transaction will probably be in a nine to 12 month time frame and be worth about a million dollars. So the 500,000 that comes in now will be converted to whatever that security looks like in, in about a year or so. Uh, and then the next uh, financing after that is about another $3 million. And as I was referring or highlighting in the financial model earlier, uh, that's it. They've raised, uh, you know, they won't need, they'll have enough profitability where they won't need additional capital after that. My value add in, in terms of what they're, you know, the consulting for equity piece here is this financing uh, process is uh, something I'm quite comfortable with. I've secured these amounts many times already in other stories that I've been part of. And, and uh, part of the you, uh, uniqueness of this offering is you expecting investors today to participate in follow-on rounds on the way through. Um, and uh, so investor relations becomes very important. And in my, in my last company, um, we had 80% uh, of our initial investors invest in follow-on rounds. Um, then, uh, so, and the other piece here is uh, they're looking for five to 10 beta test partners, uh, each of whom is capable of delivering five to 10 home print testers. So for myself, um, I've, I've, uh, I've you know, profiled this on a number of calls, but basically I've been, I've been part of 14 startups in the past, nine of which are venture capital backed, six from the point of founding. Um, so I've taken companies from uh, you know, idea in a coffee shop to, uh, to venture funding and, and, and then I moved on. Um, you know, so I've got experience in building a world-class ca company from that first inception and across multiple sectors. So most of it's in high tech, including computer software as this one is, but it's also biotech, life sciences, and I've, I've done some uh, other industries as well, for example, in real estate. Fundraising experience, uh, I've done over 80 transactions, totaling over $3 billion, um, and a broad mix from like the smallest deals, probably $100,000 to over 350 million. So I understand the capital markets, how it's structured, how you pitch to different players at, at different stages and uh, you know what you have to look like to get money from them at that point in time. Um, and uh, so 
they ask of me right now uh, is that they've asked me to uh, have a sort of an active mentorship role at the company to help build the company, assist them with business planning and financial modeling and attracting investors. Uh, they'd like a participation on the advisory board. And because I have a finance background, uh, doing a fractional CFO role with them as well. In exchange, as I said, this is consulting for equity. Uh, so 10 to 15% of the company would be what I would expect. And my expectation would be uh, norm the way I normally do something like this is I get all the equity up front. Um, and then, uh, but it's all subject to a, it was called the reverse vesting agreement. Basically, if, if I don't uh, pan out, they can just buy it back uh, for, you know, basically a penny. Um, and I'll open up for uh, discussions. Carl, over to you. Rick, amazing. So great, great presentation, lots of analytics. You know, it's really amazing to see how your brain works. Uh, I, I think what you can do with this as well, and I've done similar consulting for equity projects before, where, you know, you, you get a piece of the deal for your expertise and, and, and being, you know, the numbers guy and the strategy guy. But then I, I think potentially as you as you scale this thing up, to hit those numbers, you're going to need follow-on um, investing rounds. So I think you should get compensated in terms of fees and equity, more equity, if you're the, the point person that's actually driving that additional investment into the company. Um, so fascinating stuff. Like I, I've not really kind of seen or heard from this before. Um Certainly, outside of the uh, of the residential real estate stuff, I know we have I have a similar thing in my house in England, uh, and I think others have as well. But um, but no, this this is really really interesting. Uh, this is like a a new innovative uh, game changing technology. But uh, lots and lots of questions in. What I've actually done as well, guys, is I've messaged Christian Blumetti uh, just so that we can really drill into this. Um, for the next 20 minutes. I, I'm going to move Christian to spot one on the red light, green light call uh, next week so we can spend the rest of the call kind of drilling against this because there's so many questions in here from the likes of, of David Geralt, Dave Evans, uh, Carter, which I want to get to. But first off, um, I'm going to go to Kyle first just because of the innovative nature of this. Um, Kyle, what's your take on this, man? I think still Kyle... I Kyle, had to, he just sent me a message. He had to jump off. All right, cool. Jeremy, I'll go to you. Yeah. Um, yeah, very, very interesting product. It almost kind of reminds me of, like, the Carfax uh, for, for homes almost. But, um, you know, with, with consulting for equity type deals like this, you know, really – I dig into the background of, you know, whoever the, the owner is, whoever developed this, because you can, you know, consulting for equity deals are, are great because, you know, they, they pitch it to you as you're going to get equity in the deal. Um, you know, you're going to get all this potential upside, but you can put a lot of time into these types of engagements. And if you don't have the, the right jockey in place to be able to, to execute, uh, that's, that's a lot of time wasted for, for, for you. So I, I really dig into, you know, their, their background, their expertise, because, you know, if, if they're not able to, to grow these types of companies or, or scale them themselves and, and those types of things, um, it can be a lot of time wasted. Also with these types of consulting for equity deals, I always ask for some sort of retainer. Uh, so there's some skin in the game, uh, from, from whoever's bringing you on as well. So you're getting some sort of base, uh, type type compensation for them, but but yeah, a, a very interesting product. Uh, definitely think there's a you know a need a, a place in the the market for this. So um, excellent presentation. Thank you. So so just to respond to a couple of those um, on the background of the people. So uh, as I mentioned, I've been like six starters from scratch. In all the things that I've done, uh, the founders have always found their way to me. They've been referred to me by industry intermediaries, by accountants, lawyers, those kinds of folks. Uh, and this is the same thing. So they came highly, highly recommended. Um, and I've got to know them. You know, I didn't agree to this. So I, I left my last, uh, I had my last exit in 2018. And I considered myself too young to retire and too old to start again. And yet here I am thinking about starting again. So it's taken a lot for me to, to be open to this. And so it, it, there's been a lot of tire kicking where exactly what you're saying, Jeremy, I wanted to make sure that they're, uh, you know, the proof is in the pudding kind of thing. These guys are, you know, are worth their salt. And uh, so, so 
they keep checking the boxes off from a industry access. And so when I when I evaluate these opportunities, I also always try to understand what the challenges are to future success. And when you go through the business model, technology was not one of the key elements of the success according to the business model in my mind, right? The the notion of the app itself is there's lots of people you can help develop the on the technical side. So the two founders are from the real estate industry, which is you know basically marketing of revenue growth. They've been relying, they, so to get the alpha done, et cetera, in their previous product, they've relied on uh, uh, developers that you know brought in for hire kind of thing to, to, to get the product done. So I'm, I'm quite comfortable that there's no uh, access, you know, no requirements that way that can't be, you know, that's going to get in the way of, of the future, future uh, success. So I've, just, I've assessed that sort of risk. It's, it's never perfect, but I'm, I'm quite comfortable so far. On the second piece, the notion of getting paid uh, a retainer is always challenging when you're dealing with a startup because they don't have cash. Um, and uh, so I think as the, and I personally have, have never wanted to uh, use up investors' money in the first round to pay management salaries. So I, to me, the first money coming in goes toward what she yeah, had value to the company, which is the product development and the marketing in this context. Uh, so th that notion probably is becomes more important when they get the million dollar round and up, for example. The second thing is, is uh, contingency fees. Uh, that's a fine line to, uh, to walk from a regulatory standpoint. Um, I'm not registered as a, as a, a, a broker to help, uh, you know, our financial intermediary. So I can't get contingency fees uh, and be on side with the legal system. Uh, but you can do it if you're the CFO, because then I'm representing the company. So I'd have to give some thought to, uh, uh, you know, what that can sort of fractional CFO role that they're asking me to fill and how much time I actually want to commit to that, because I've, I've got other plans as well. Nice. Thank you for that. Right. I was, just want to go around the room. There's, there's been some really cool um, questions in the chat, and I want to go to Patrick Alvarez as well, who's got his hand up. So... Uh, yeah, so Car Carter Baker's got a lot of insights, uh, has a lot to say on this. Carter, why don't you unmute yourself and let, let's get you riffing with Rick on this stuff. Yeah, hey, Rick. Um, I really like the idea behind this this product. I don't think there's something that really encompasses this in the U.S., at least that I'm aware of. Um, it sounds like some folks on the other side of the pond have something similar to this, but Really what it comes down to is whether or not these clients are actually going to use this product. And I think the key to that is going to be like a rapid, feed, a rapid feedback loop when you're building this out. And so if you have a way to sweeten the pot with the first 100 to 1,000 users, um, I'm not sure how you would do that exactly, but you want to have them using it as often as possible so that you can find the holes where they want yeah. certain things in there that's going to be crucial to the uh to the success of this product but other than that i, I like the idea behind it thank you and and that's exactly the whole purpose of having the, the beta tests um and based on their existing relationships they're quite comfortable they're going to be able to get that that uh i'll call it a thousand home prints done um with the existing relation because the company does have a good brand reputation within uh sutton realty and those 6,000 real estate agents. Um, and uh, they only want 50 of the 6,000 to, to do this. And so they're gonna go after the top end uh, uh, producers within the Sutton uh, network to, to get that, that, that 50 going and then 10 to 15 each kind of thing is the expectation. Uh, so they're quite comfortable being able to rent that, but I agree with you, that's absolutely a critical, you know, back to the business model, right? It, it's getting that traction, getting, getting the, the referral networks primed and ready to go that they want to do this or incented to do this, right? And I'll come back to that in a second. And then them actually walking the talk and actually getting it out there, right? And then it falls on from there. So, so the incentive for the real estate agent to do this is the stickiness factor for their for their perspective. So, if you're a real estate agent, um, you want to always be looking for adding value to your clients that no one else does in terms of why it's beneficial to work with you. Um, and so this becomes one of those items, right? It doesn't cost anything to, to the homeowner. Um, and, you know, what well, we can provide you assistance to get your mortgage in place, 
to, uh, you know, anytime you want to know what your current value is, you, you, you can check on your dashboard, you know, all those kinds of things. And again, it doesn't cost you anything, Mr. Homer or Ms. Homer. Yeah. And the thing that, that inspires confidence in me is the fact that these guys have such expansive experience in the real estate space. They know what their clients want, what they need. Um, it's, it's just yeah. really going to come down to how easy is this platform to use? How clean is it? Right. Do they like to use it? Um, can you, can you stay in front of them year round with this product? Yep. And those but. are all the things you're going to be looking for in the beta test for sure. And the other thing I'll add to it in terms of, of the, you know, back when I go through the startup process, you know, I, I do the business plan and the financial model, all that kind of stuff. At the end of that exercise, I ask myself, what are the key things that are going to challenge this company's success in the next five years? And then of those things, what areas do I need help with in terms of I don't have enough knowledge? And so then I, I, I define advisor seats at an advisory table based around, I call them knowledge centers. What, you know, what are the areas I want some help with? And then I populate those are the best people I can find to sit in those seats so that I have a, a go-to resource in each case. So you touched on one of those seats in, in your comments there, which is access to the real estate industry. To me, you know, back to number one on the, on the business model, it's not just about these guys' networks, but their board members are also totally plugged in as well. Got it. So when you say five to 10 beta test partners, those are agents who are going to be reaching out to 10 of their clients. Does that sound right? Right. Okay. Yeah. I mean, anything you can do to increase that, that, that test pool is going to be huge in the beginning. Well, absolutely. And, and speed with which that gets done. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, that, that's all I got for now. Good job, Rick. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, David Gerald. You've got some questions. Honestly, I am so confused at this point as to what this <laughs> actually is. I I thought at the, with the opening slide, I thought it was kind of Angie's List meets Carfax. Um, and but but then we got off into mortgage brokers and insurance, and, and so give me I guess. If you could go back and give me the 30 second elevator pitch of, of yeah, so take, take, take your Carfax idea, and, yeah, take your Carfax idea. So, but it, it's not just about it, it's the car you own, not the one you, you don't own, you're thinking of buying, right? So, right. you own a car and you've got the equivalent of the Carfax that has everything that's going on with the car, its accident history, when the last time I had a soil change, and all kinds of stuff. Now, that app, in addition to having all that information, tells you. Uh, reminds you that you know hey you know your your tires need to be changed over to the next season and by the way uh, they probably also need to be replaced because it's been three years since you last had your tires replaced right you've now got this many kilometers in your tires right so so it it proactively reminds you as well and in case you're selling you're thinking of, of leasing your car here's what your car is currently worth it'll do that for you right without you having to ask it does that explain a little bit differently yeah, that does. So, so, so then I guess to go the next step. Uh, so I get that as the user. That that's cool. I, you know, I, yeah. I could probably go with that. Um, where does the revenue stream come from? Am, am I? Because you said it's free to me. So who's yep. who? Who's your customer? I see where your user is, but who's your customer? Uh, so let me just go back up to this part right here. Right. So the bottom bar here is where the the revenues happen. Right. So you're going to get $700 from a mortgage broker every time a mortgage is, is uh, one of your referrals gets a mortgage from them. You're going to get a 0.5% a, a of the loan value when you help uh, arrange a uh, renovation loan for a homeowner. You're going to get $80 for each uh, uh, insurance policy gets put in place with one of your home front, uh, customers. So okay. it's monetizing the eyeballs. Got it. Got it. Okay. That, thank you. That, I, now it makes sense again. <laughs> I, I got lost there in the middle. <laughs> no worries. Um, no, no I, I think this is, I, I think this is really cool. I think the consulting for equity opportunity for you is, I mean, it, it's a perfect fit with, with your, uh, with, with your background. Um, and uh, so I, I like that. I, got, I guess my last question, just in terms of the, in terms of the initial round, um, 
are, are there any uh, are there any valuation caps or anything on the on the conversion of the note? Uh, so it hasn't been done yet, but the way I've typically done them is, I would answer that no. What I've typically done is, so in the U.S., the angel community relies on what's called the safe note, which is exactly that, right? right? So whatever the price is for the next one, I got a 20% discount, for example, to that pricing. What I've done is use a convertible note, not a safe note, where I'm going to pay, I'm, I being the company, I'm going to pay, I'll call it 2.5% a month accruing interest. So the longer you hold your note between when you make your investment and when that, that conversion happens, you keep accruing 2.5% a month on the face value of the note. So effectively, you're getting a discount to the future round based on that accru accrued uh, interest. So yeah. it rewards people coming in earlier uh, than later kind of, kind of thing, as opposed to everybody getting 20% no matter what. The other thing on those notes that, I, that just to compare them with the U.S. Uh, security, safe notes don't ever expire. Right. right, they can just sit there. I've been in companies in the past where, uh, you know, it took a lot longer, and the company got in trouble because of that uh, to to find that qualified round. And in the meantime, the angel investors, original angel investors, were, uh, you know, left hung and you know, hanging dry with no place, no recourse on anything. The convertible notes have a maturity date, so you would typically get I don't know twelve to eighteen months to uh, get that qualified transaction round done. Or my note expires and I want my money back. In which case, that typically puts the company in a refinancing situation. Yeah. Cool. <clears throat> All righty. We've got about uh, seven or eight minutes left. Let me go back. Uh, actually, let's go to uh, Patrick Alvarez, then John Chirinsky. Uh Super quick. Uh, I just want to echo something that Carter said. So I'm currently a product owner at a cybersecurity company. And I realized that the reason why we've lit, we've lost some of our biggest uh, contracts to our competitors is um, it, it, it's, it's yes, we have on par technology, but the UX design isn't as fair, uh, favorable for other uh, customers or, or prospects, right? Because in order to grow this company, yes, you, you mentioned it, right? You, you need you need to leverage those partnerships. You need a strong or robust uh, sales team, but it is going to be how, how much time do customers want to spend and actually keep whatever software, this particular software or application. Um, so uh, we had to go through multiple uh, iterations. So, and then also really identifying what is our USP or our unique seller proposition when you look at some of the top two to three big guys uh, on the market. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to say that again, that the USP or the, or, or the application and then seeing how the other uh, big guys, what their uh, user experience also looks like is going to be the, 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 the differentiating factor. Uh, because you guys might have better technology, but if the customer thinks that like you have 2,500 features and they don't know how to use any of them, like, uh, and it's just the last thing, like five clicks to get to someplace versus two clicks, customers, for whatever reason, I mean, I think we we, we start to realize that too. They they definitely love that, but yeah, that's, that's about it. Yeah. And, and so on the user experience uh, point, first of all, um, you know, these guys aren't techies, right? In the sense of uh, this is not going to be led by technology people. It's going to be led by user experience. And mm -hmm. and uh, so I, I, I so I have not seen the product, so I can't speak to uh, directly that way. Uh, but so I get comfort to know that it, it it's being designed by users as opposed to technology people. And again, this whole what you just touched on is the whole purpose of why they do an alpha now a beta to pre-test it in, in various areas to get the bugs out of that, that experience as much as possible before they go live, right? So, so I, I've got faith in the process a little bit. The second thing in terms of, of uh, comparisons of what's available in the marketplace, as I sh was showing in the competitive mark, uh, slide earlier, um, the, I mean, I'll just scroll back up to here for a second so I can have it in front of me while I talk. Um, you know, there are other ones out there, right? But they don't have the same offerings, right? And the one thing I always have in my mind when I see charts like this from companies is, okay, this list of benefits, the report to you because you got all the green check marks, but maybe customers don't care about them, right? That's why none of the other guys have them. Um, but if you look at what they hear, they touch on what you were just raising your comments, right? The ease of the use, the, the, the 
the one click approach to it kind of stuff. The information comes to you, so you don't have to go hunting for it, right? So just that that ease of the experience are all touched off in, the, in that list of benefits. So so they're, you know, back to the fact that the product is being designed by users, not techies, I, I think is important. And when you look at comparisons as well, I never take it for granted. That doesn't mean there's going to be a forever uh, advantage. It just means a right now advantage. Um, and because the competitors could be addressing those shortcomings as well. Right. So you, but you've got a good head start. Thank you. Great. John Sminsky. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Rick, two quick comments. I know this business is going to work good for you because years ago, years ago in Denver, I ran a uh, small home fix up company and my referrals all came from brokers from their sellers who wanted their houses fixed up. Then the second part is um, there's a company called Credit Karma and they give you free echo score and credit monitoring. And in exchange, if you buy a credit card through them, they get a commission and they're very successful. And it's kind of similar idea. That's all I have to say. Thank you, yep, thank you John, a absolutely correct. Great, okay, thank you for that. Let's go back to the chat. We've got four minutes left. Um, okay, uh, what else have we got from you guys? Uh, Crystal Anderson had a lot of really positive thoughts and comments on this. Uh, Crystal, uh, do you want to unmute and um, join the join the conversation? You still on the call? No. Okay. Um, she gone. Let me go back through. Steve Holland, you were on a broker call for the first deal. What do you thought, think about this? Yeah, I got to love the broker calls, man. Always selling brokers. Um, yeah, this. so this is interesting. Obviously, VC, I, I, I mean, I have a lot of questions about liability. Um, you know, when, when something goes wrong and people start pointing fingers, how do you actually claim things? What What is the process to be able to claw back if something needs to get re-repaired you're trying to check as i understand it, you're trying to track the, the 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 renovations and things that are being fixed in the house uh for insurance purposes so what if something goes wrong is this a, is this this is there a liability yeah, no, claim exactly. to... so so think of it like a marketplace right uh so you're not you don't there's no liability for the marketplace vendor itself it's between the the um the home maintenance person, right? And the homeowner, right? So they're, th this isn't entering, designing a contract between those parties. They're just introducing them. And it's going to be just like the insurance broker, for example. All we're going to do is, is make a referral. This homeowner is looking for an insurance quote or this homeowner is looking for a mortgage to be put in place or this homeowner is looking to have a, 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 you know, a bathroom renovation done. After that is between the parties. So th there's very li little uh, liability for this company in that transaction. Got it. Yeah. I, I mean, first of all, kudos to you, Rick. It, it sounds like you've done this before. You've done this quite a bit and you have quite the pedigree. Um, you're, you're definitely more gifted in the VC space than I am. Um, I'm still, I, I'm with David Gerald a little bit. I'm still trying to wrap my head around all the parties, what the avatars are, what their motivations are. I'm, I'm just not quite sure. Um, and, and, and for your contribution, I mean, I, I love the, the sort of reverse earn in, where you start with the equity and then you sort of prove yourself um, throughout the process. I think that that's a smart way to go about consulting for equity. I would be interested to see if as the money starts to come in, if there's other ways to get paid on bringing uh, capital to the table. I, I like getting paid cash for doing work that I do instead of just being told that if this works, you get paid. And if it doesn't, you sort of ate your time. So um, I'd say keep pressing into it. I, I I just think about the under other industries. Why hasn't this worked in the insurance space? Um, I'd love to have uh, for for personal health. I'd love to have all my records consolidated into a single platform so that my doctors know um, when I go from one to the other what my records are. I just always feel like there's other powers at be that are de incentivizing the consolidation of information, and I try to understand why those why those things have not been developed and put in place, and what is what has kept this from actually getting to market before, you know, before. So anyway, good, good luck with this. I wish the best for you. Thank you. 
Awesome. All right, guys. So get your votes in. Um, you know, deal one or deal two, obviously very, very different. So probably not really fair to do a compare and contrast. You know, deal one was a solid um, full acquisition. You know, deal two is a, a very innovative, high growth consulting for equity play. But um, yeah, it'd be interesting to see, you know, wh whether you're more aligned to deal one or, or deal two. But, you know, I don't think we can read, you know, kind of much into that. You know, what I want to do in the last minute is just... Um, just hit me up in the chat here with what's your single biggest takeaway uh, from this call. Obviously, there's a lot of stuff that we've been through today about the event, about deal one, deal two, both absolutely um, great deals, but in different ways. So, yeah, just hit me up, guys, in the chat um, through the group. Uh, what's your single biggest takeaway? And we'll go through and reveal those. So uh, takeaway from John, quality of the presentations are tremendous. They are. Carol loved the TAM, the TAM Samsung. Um, David, maybe you and I can do a little training on that going forward. If uh, if the guys want to learn that in a bit more detail, we'll do a we'll do a live. Uh, we'll, we'll riff on a on a particular business to do that for you. Which yeah, is really let's do that. Yeah, David Gerald, there's so many ways to be deal maker. That's true. Jerry Barber about mindset. Um, Marcel pitch decks tell the stories. Red light, green lights confirm the thesis. That's the quote of the day, guys. Pitch deck tells the story. Red light, green light confirms the thesis. He's talking about the one sheet. I love that. I absolutely love that. That's amazing. Um, Lisa Harvey, the thinking creativity is tremendous. Ollie, you can find seller listed deals on broker sites. Um, is the juice worth the squeeze? Um, Clive, great presentation from Rick. Jennifer, love the learning, still a bit green, but love to learn. Well, Jennifer, you're in the right room. This is where we can teach you all of this stuff. It's amazing. Um, loads of Tam Sam Som, uh, which is really cool. Um, Ken's agreed. Med spas are worth considering. Ken's based in California as well, guys. So, uh, uh, Olga, you might want to reach out to Ken. I know he lives there. Uh, Jared Clark loves the ways to structure consulting for equity deals. Um Steve Holland, who's one of our gangsters, he's learned to call Nick for my next VC, Saskia. I think he's talking about Nick Bradley, right? Yeah, um, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, lots of um, lo lots of comments on here. Um, I love the comment from Christian. Biggest takeaway, everyone keeps upping their game on the presentations. And, and I, I would absolutely agree with that. Uh, I think the way you guys are pitching you know, you, you're going to blow investors away with the right deals. So that's that's my biggest takeaway, just how good these presentations are, how well you guys know these deals, how well you guys can answer these questions. Um, that's uh, that's the best thing for me. So love it, guys. Uh, it's been a great call. Um, I'm, uh, I'm not going to be on the uh, foundation call uh, tomorrow. Kendall's going to be squaring that away with who's going to take that session. You'll never guess what I'm doing tomorrow, right? I have to take my Florida driving test. Like, what the fuck, right? I've been driving for 35 years, right? I bought a car in the US, in Florida, and I still only have my UK driving license. And my insurance company have said, dude, you need to get a Florida driver's license. So I went to the DMV and I said, hey, here's my UK driving license. Here's my super clean UK driving record. I need a Florida driver's license. They're like, well, dude, you got to take a test. I'm like, why? Like, my children can drive. Like, what the, what the hell? No. So I've got to, I've had to study this book to learn all the, like, signs. And then I got to take a test tomorrow. So that's that's what I'm doing. And then my, my business partner, Ross Turner, in my Econ Folio venture, uh, he's flying down this weekend with his wife, Jess, who a lot of you met at the event. Uh, they're going to be hanging in... Um, in Space Coast Florida with me all weekend because there's a space launch. We're going to go and stand on the beach tomorrow evening with a beer. And uh, I don't know if you guys have ever seen a rocket take off from Cape Canaveral, but the freaking beach shakes and you're holding a beer and the beer's shaking. So uh, that's going to be pretty awesome. So um, I won't see you tomorrow, but I will see you on Monday for the quarterly uh, protege review and kickoff. Got some really cool new stuff that we want to uh, share with you guys. Obviously, 
announce all the winners and the prizes and the deals and all that great stuff. So have a great rest of your day and week. I will see you guys on Monday. Um, I'm not sure who's taking the um, uh, the training tomorrow, but it will be somebody. So uh, we'll get back to you on that through Circle. But have a great rest of your week, guys, and I will see you guys soon. Until then, bye-bye for now. Bye, guys. So I hope you enjoyed that deal review. Definitely subscribe to this channel. Hit, also hit like and share so that you're getting the very best content from me in real time. Every time I want to announce my deal of the week, I want you to see it so that you can understand it. And what's interesting is the more of these deal reviews that you go through, you'll start to see the patterns. You'll start to see how seller psychology and valuation and deal structure all kind of combine. You'll start to see common patterns when we look at the financial analysis. You'll start to see common patterns in kind of red flags and what the growth and exit opportunities might be if you bought a business like this and you took it forward into the marketplace. So definitely keep watching these and I will see you soon for the next deal review. Until then, bye for now. Hey guys, I'm Carl Allen. I'm the founder of Dealmaker Wealth Society. I've done tens of billions of dollars of deals over the last 30 plus years. If you're new to my channel, definitely hit like and subscribe so that you can get all of my amazing Dealmaker content in real time. You're not gonna miss any of the outstanding information that I'm gonna share with you. And if there's a question that you've got, if there's something that you want to know the answer for and you want me to speak to it, definitely hit me up in the comments section and I will record those videos for you and I will get them on this channel as soon as possible. So love having you part of this YouTube community and I can't wait to serve you. Until then, bye-bye for now.